All right, welcome back to The Herd. I'm Jason Whitlock filling in for Colin Cowherd. Christine Lay here is with me. Clarence Hill from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram is also here with me. We're going to talk some Tony Romo. Clarence, welcome to The Herd. What's up, man? How are you doing? Awesome. Clarence, why did I – I thought you worked at the Dallas Morning News. No, no, no. Always the Fort Worth Star-Telegram over in Fort Worth, Texas. Fucky Gene. town, Fort Party Worth, the enemy of Dallas. <laughs> All right, Gene Jock, <laughs> Dallas Morning News. Used to, now he's at ESPN yes. Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Ed Werder is reporting Tony Romo will be released, not traded. Uh, have you confirmed that? Is that true? Well, he's reporting that he expects to be. I don't, the decision has not been made. Uh, and and I don't know if, if the Cowboys have wrapped their arms around that whole decision. Certainly, they're going to try to trade him. The problem with trading him is, is you trade him, you got to trade the contract. You know, and, and I don't know if anybody wants to pick up the contract at this point. That's going to be the tough part of trading. Who has the cap room to trade for the contract? Secondly, you know, it, it makes sense that they, he at, at some point would eventually get released, and that would be the way to go. It's because he was a good soldier, and, and they may try to do right by him as long as he doesn't go to, say, the Redskins. You know, let's 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 do a test. It's understanding that, hey, we release you. You're not going to go to somewhere in our division and maybe somewhere not in the NFC. But, uh, you know, a, a final decision has not been made. Uh, and, and certainly this speculation, and this will be Romo speculation all the way up until it happens. We're joined by Clarence Hill of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. He's covered the Cowboys since the days of Tom Landry. Uh, it feels that way. <laughs> so there were no titles and no, no, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, I guess spring of winning seasons, no Super Bowl trophies uh, during my tenure. Yeah, you're the bad luck piece. Hey, listen, why wouldn't the Cowboys consider keeping Tony Romo? You got Dak on a rookie contract, and you got arguably the best backup quarterback in football. Why isn't that a possibility? Oh, that's Jerry's dream world. You know, but Romo does not want to stay as a backup. Romo believes he should be the star, believes he should be, you know, in his heart of hearts, believes he should be starting in front of that. You know, he played good cold, good soldier, good cop. He did the right thing for the team. He basically recused himself. He did his recession speech and, 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 and you know, took the pressure off the Cowboys for having to come out and bench him and do all the other stuff about what bowing out this year because of how everything was going. Now, you know, he still wants to play. He, he's come back from a shoulder surgery last year and a back surgery this year. He, he, he can play. He wants an opportunity to play and start and maybe take his own team to, uh, to relive his own Super Bowl goals. And he knows that's not going to happen in Dallas. This is more about Tony wanting uh, to be a starter more so than the Cowboys trying to find a way to make him uh, stay as a backup. I mean, they would love for that to happen. I don't know if they want to do it with uh, him making $14 million. They still need to open other areas. But that would be Jerry's dream to keep Tony. You said something interesting. You believe Tony Romo believes he should still be the starting quarterback. Oh, there's no question about that. There's, there's, no, there's no question about that. I mean, why? And, and, well, I, mean, yeah, I mean, it's like anybody. He's confident in himself. He's confident in his ability. Certainly, uh, you know, they're in their stacks of the Cowboys fans, and he believes he's, he's a better thrower. You know, and all those stuff. When it just comes down to quarterback, he, he thinks he's more experienced. He's a better thrower. He knows the offense. Uh, and there are probably there are people that believe that as well. That he's, you know, is a better quarterback. You know, now that he's the best person for this football team. And I think ultimately that's what it came down to last year and, and, and going forward. Dak may be the right man for this football team because of use, because of what he brings in the locker room, because of the team chemistry with Duke and and you know this is a young team and it's this that that's that's, you know, Dak is now the Pied Piper. But as far as Romo's mind, Romo's confidence, Romo's abilities, he thinks he's a better quarterback. There's no question about that. We're joined by Clarence Hill of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. He's covered the Cowboys for decades. Is there any truth in what Romo is saying? Is he better than Dak Prescott? Well, I, I think that, that, that the, the problem, all of that comes with qualifications and, 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 and the qualified thing with Romo. When Romo is healthy, he's a very good cool quarterback. You go back to 2014 when he, you know, was competing for NFL Player of the Year award uh, with Aaron Rodgers. I think he finished second. 
You know, he had 31 touchdowns and nine interceptions, and, and, and he had his great year. When Romo's healthy, he's as good as any. The question is, can he stay healthy? You know, and can you keep him upright? Can you, can, you know, look, I think uh, probably three of the last six times or seven times he set the field, he left with a broken bone. You know, and, and, and that's the question the Cowboys have in mind. It's a question they don't want to take. They have a young guy that's ready to move forward, and, and they can do that with that because they can win with that. If you could speculate a little bit, what do you think Jerry Jones thinks? Do you think Jerry Jones thinks, excluding health, Romo is a better quarterback than Dak? Oh, I think Jerry thinks that. I mean, Jerry's, you know, he talks all season. The part of it is him selling tickets, but part of it is, you know, I think Jerry's beholden to Romo and, and, and everything else. He believes that. I think Jerry was the last one to come aboard and, and, and to, the, to the Dak train, certainly – uh, Jason Garrett and, and, and the quarterback coaches led the charge, but uh, you know, again, if you remember the all during the season, you know, Jerry, you know, talked of Rumble as much as he talked of Dak, and even though Dak was one leading to the winning streak and Rumble hadn't played all year, but he continued to talk about the dream of Rumble, you know, contributing to a Super Bowl and, and somehow finding a way on the field to help him, you know, make a Super Bowl run. You know, whether he believes it or whether he just wants it because of his students of Romo, you know, I, I think there's some blurred lines there. But again, you know, that's been Jerry's belief. But again, even Jerry has come to realize that Dak is the guy for this team. And you know, even last week in, 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 a, in a news, in a radio interview he did locally, he talked about, really for the first time, about Romo not being here, you know, and, and, and how it would make him feel that Romo not being here. And, you know, and, and, and he said, you know, he hasn't come to terms with that, but, you know, those are things that's on his mind. So, you know, everybody in this organization understands that Romo will be playing somewhere else next year. Is moving on from Romo a completely 100% non-controversial decision in Dallas among the 53 guys on that roster? Are there any Romo holdouts in that locker room? No, I mean, some of the guys that, that, that are close to Romo, like Jason Witten and some of the older guys that have been there with him. Jason Witten has been his best friend. He's been there since he uh, started in his league. But, you know, this locker room is, is 100% behind Dak, you know, and they've been that way. And, and again, Dak and Zeke and, and everybody saw what they did last year and believe they can move forward with them. You know, even Witten, you know, he has talked about, you know, the future the Cowboys have with Dak and Zeke, uh, uh, you know, leading the way and and that's just you know you talk about a meritocracy you can talk about you know what they earned it whether it's just a feeling but but those guys you know they're the leaders of this team they're they're the spirit they give the team energy and and the, and the cowboys are ready to go forward with that we're joined by clarence hill the fort worth star telegram clarence probably not your particular area of concern but could you speculate on where you think Tony Romo may go if he is released? Oh, if he's released, then, you know, you, you look at a place like Denver. I mean, I think that's been the guy, the place that everybody's pointing to, just going back to the Peyton Manning days and, and, and how he's with and how Elway, you know, basically re jump started his career. Uh, uh, injured quarterback that was, you know, parted by his former team and, and come and take them to Super Bowl glory. I mean, you look at that roster, those quarterbacks, that's a, that's a team that's ready to win now based on their defense and the veteran players they have. They need a veteran quarterback uh, to lead them. Uh, you look at Denver. Uh, Houston is, again, another team that is a local team, both of them in the AFC, which would be great for the Cowboys if that was the case. Those two teams, Houston is another team that has a great defense, has field players on offense. They believe they're a quarterback away. That's the mission ingredient, they're a quarterback away. I'm uh, really contending and make a Super Bowl run. Those teams are top of the list. You can look at other teams like maybe the Jets. The Jets, uh, maybe the Bears. I don't know if, 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 if they're a team that's ready to win, but, you know, Romo is not going to go out there to, to a rebuilding process or, or, or to a situation where he has to rebuild a struggle. You know, he wants to continue to play. He wants to go to where he can win. I would say Denver and Houston are the best options. Do you believe, having watched Romo, and seeing how brittle he seems to be at 37, do you think he would be a wise investment for a team that's trying to win next year? You know, again, 
that's a $64,000 question. You know, it can he stay healthy? And I think that that's a question in everybody's mind. Certainly one more blade he can, but until he goes out there and takes a hit, you know, you don't know. You know, look at last year, and, and you know, he just, it was it seemed a simple play in a preseason game. He gets crunched and he breaks a bone. And, and, and that's the question. I, I think investment is, is depending on how much you're investing is, is the issue. You know, I, I think that it would be wise for a team like that to take a chance on Romo. Yeah, a quarterback needy team. You know, if, if you're going to get a $72 million with Brock Osweiler, I would take a chance on a guy like Tony Romo. That's a wise investment for Houston. Uh, again, you got to hedge your bets. So, you know, you can't invest $72 million. You know, you, you, you certainly have to, to make, you know, some incentives in there and make it a, a team-friendly deal to, to cover yourself in case you, stay, if you can't stay healthy. But, yeah, it, it's an investment worth the risk for a team that's ready to win now, to ready to try to win now, like a Houston or a Denver. And especially like a team like Denver, which has a young quarterback that they can develop, they can bring along, they can take take their time with him and pack them there. Clarence, let me ask you about Dak Prescott. Kind of a two-part question. Uh, you've seen 16 games. Are you 100% all in on Dak Prescott as a franchise quarterback? Or... Can, the uh, my part two of that is what I've seen with a lot of young quarterbacks are RG three. Can they handle the success? That that's sometimes well, harder you know, to handle and, and, than failure. Right, and, and, I, and let's not let's not put him in RG three category. I mean, and, and that's what you know, a lot of people like to do. I mean, I'd rather put him in Russell Wilson category than RG three category. You know, if, if you're going to do that, you want to compare him to a a young quarterback who came out and had success early. Well, let me let uh, me stop you there. <laughs> let me stop you there because I want you to spend some time there. Tell me why he's more like Russell Wilson. You've been around him. What kind of guy is he? How? But this this, this guy's not a prima donna, you know, and, and he's not a guy that that's you know making nice with the owner and and, and trying to separate separate himself from the locker room. He's not a guy. I mean, you look at some of the things that RG three did, and let's let's start on the field, okay? When the, the success RG three had on the field was more about athleticism than quarterback. You know, it was more about him. You know, they, they took some things from his college offense and, and, and you know, he'd make one read and he'd wow you with athleticism. Dak Prescott's game is not about athleticism. It's, it's about making the right play. You know, he took what was there. He studied. He's a guy that came in from day one, you know, and, and wowed the Cowboys on the chalkboard, wowed the Cowboys were working, and wowed the Cowboys what he did in the locker room and learned the playbook, and he was prepared. Uh, for this opportunity, and he made the most of it. It wasn't a situation where it was all about him tricking with uh, athleticism, and, and that's something that you know you, you look at RG three, and it was about athleticism more so than just simple quarterback skills and and going through his reads. You, you look at you know what Dak Prescott did on the field, and you look at his quarterback rate. Right? He had the best statistical season of any rookie quarterback in NFL history. He was always high up there. He broke Cowboy records, not just rookie record, but team record with quarterback rate. Right? It was because he was making the right play, going through his reads, making the right throws. He was reading defenses and doing that sort of thing. So that's what separates him from, say, a guy like RG3. I mean, everybody wants to compare him to RG3 because uh, they came from, uh, you know, the mobile-type systems and, and were, were great as rookie. But they, they are nothing like on the field. And, again, off the field, if you look at the things that, that Dak has done and said and how he's handled things off the field, it's, it's much different than RG3. Uh, you know, early in his rookie season, you know, there was a chance that that was story out. We talked about it, but, and I'm sure you guys have talked about it. You know, he was giving tickets to, to a concert, you know, I think it was a Kanye West concert. And he chose not to go because it was on a Thursday and he didn't want people seeing him on a Thursday at a concert and thinking he was not working. You know, he chose, I mean, those are the type of conscious decisions that he makes that he has made as a rookie. You know, and he was not a first round pick. He's not a guy with, he's a, you know, they fourth round pick, but he's already thinking consciously about those type of things. During the bye week, he talked, you know, he didn't, he turned down, you know, opportunities to do commercials during the bye week, go spend time with his family and different things like that. Those are conscious decisions that he made. And here's a guy who got his, you know, got a master's degree in organizational leadership. You know, he talked about those things. He He's prepared to be a leader. He's always been a leader all his life. So those are things that he presses. Uh, in his locker room that he pressed upon himself to do the right thing, say the right thing, and certainly he is led by example as much as he led by his play. 
Last question, Clarence, and I'll let you go. You've done a great job. I think one thing he perhaps doesn't get credit for, and maybe he doesn't deserve any, but I've kind of given it to him from afar. Early in the year, there was a talk he didn't have a connection with Dez Bryant. We get to the end of the year, tough playoff game. Dez Bryant plays his ass off, and Dez Bryant played with a composure and a maturity that I don't think we've seen from him previously, and I'm just wondering if Dak – doesn't deserve some credit for that, the, re- the development of that relationship, and maybe Dez following Dak's lead as a more mature player. Does Dak deserve any credit for that? Oh, there's no doubt. You know, and, and, and the you know, thing about it is everybody was talking about the relationship with, with Dez. With Dez missed time in camp. Dez missed time early in the season with injury. You know, those things take time, you know, and it was going to happen, and it did happen. He's going to get the ball to Dez, and, and he did. And, you know, the funny thing about it is, that was Dez's best postseason game. Those were Dez's first postseason touchdowns in his career. He never caught a touchdown pass in postseason. I'm telling you, wrong. Well, we can debate whether he should have caught one in Green Bay or not. But facts are, he's never had that. Was his best postseason game. He had it with Dak Prescott. But yeah, Dak has been the leader, you know. And and and, and Dez has taken his step back and let Dak lead and has learned from Dak. And certainly, Dez has matured. He's matured a lot on his own the last few years. I followed him closely. Certainly, he had a year. Your last year, and was frustrated after the contract and, and had some issues with the media. But this season, you know, for starting from training camp, Dez has been a different player. But again, Dak and Zeke, he's taken the lead. He, you, know, you know, he's followed behind them. You know, those guys, again, when I talk about young guys, those guys are the younger. Those guys are guys that run this locker room right now. And yeah, you got to give Dak a lot of credit for how he's handled Dez. You know, there was, you know, real quickly, there was a story in training camp, you know, and and it's funny because Peter King had it, you know, way back in training camp, right before the start of the season, that Dak's first day when he took over from Tony Romo, they were doing, you know, one of the um, the goal line, you know, they were doing a two-minute drill. They were doing a two-minute drill, and he threw the ball to Dez, and Dez turned up field and tried to run to the end zone. And Dak went and talked to him and said, no, we, we need to get out of bounds. We need to get, get, get the ball stop. The clock stop and get out of bounds so we can make a play there. That was not the right play. He as a rookie, as a fourth round pick, taking over for Tony Romo, taking over for uh, Kellen Moore, he had the wherewithal, he had the confidence, he had the leadership to talk to Dez about that that day in training camp before he became the Dak Prescott uh, rookie sensation that he became. So that's the type of guy he is. So yeah, he has a lot for him.